developing universities as the hub of research. That's what happened in many right. developed countries. What are we doing yeah. about this aspect? Very good question. In six of the IITs, we have started IIT research paths. Day before yesterday, I inaugurated incubation center in Jaipur and NIT. So, more of the research paths, more of the incubation centers, more of the industry academic interaction happening on the campus is the start of the thing. Then we have also introduced Tukshatra Abhishkar Yosna. More than 100 projects <coughs> of more than 100 projects which are customized requests of the industries. They have given it to Indian institutes, IITs and NITs and many other institutes where they want solutions for their problems. And those problems are being researched upon by the team of faculty and students together and they are working. We have also allowed startup to grow and more than 20,000 startups in the last four years. And even on campuses, more than 400 startups have growing on campuses. So that's a new beginning of all Because we want to have brain gain instead of brain drain. How to achieve it? Why best of the best talented students go out of country? As we know, we say ourselves, IT super power. But we have not invented operating system. We have not come out with browser. We have not come out with WhatsApp, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, or any other thing. But in every of these innovations, there are Indian brains involved. So we are contributors to innovation, but not owners of innovation. And therefore, what we are suggesting is, we must have the best talented students stay and do their research in India. So what we are trying? One, the best research infrastructure, therefore the additional funding of 25,000 crore rupees. Then we have introduced the biggest scholarship, research scholarship, one lakh rupees per month, for, uh, that is called Prime Minister Research Fellowship, that we have started. And more importantly, <coughs> the best faculties we are drawing from world over, again, back to India, because good faculties, <coughs> good research infrastructure and good scholarship will give our best talented students in India and will achieve brain gain instead of brain drain. And then we can be owners of innovation for Swayam, India's own books, started two years, one, one and a half years ago. Now 23 lakh people are actually using it. You all also can go on that Swayam and see for yourself what is the revolution. 1300 plus courses, three months, six months, nine months, you get complete lecture, material, tutorial, uh, discussion forum, uh, examination, such video. We know ATM, anytime money. <laughs> But we don't know ATM. That is what we have introduced. Anytime learning, anywhere learning, lifelong learning. That is what Indian MOOCs is presenting. National Digital Library, 16 million books on your computer, on your mobile. And now I have thrown it open. It was open only to students and teachers. Now we have made open to everybody. Anybody can go to digital, become user, register themselves, and you get free access to 16 million books. It's a treasure. We are proud to have the civilization with them. We welcome all religions. This is the only land which never tries to convert anybody from any religion. We, our philosophy, India's philosophy is live and let live. Human values which needs to be taught all over in all your office organizations also. You have not been, uh, Previously, the HRD ministry was accused of appointing people with uh, what they call Sun Parivar preferences. <laughs> How do you address that? Maybe, <laughs> but uh, I am the chief institute. Also, of three institutes, we have appointed very genuine people and uh, those who are, because I am the chairman of IIT and ISERS and NIT selection, and in that process, every time there is a new uh, committee which comes up with experts. And in experts, I tell there is, there is no recommendation from my side, so there is no recommendation from anybody's. But let us evaluate the persons with vision and leadership qualities. And if that we will, so everybody writes their mark. 
we selected 10 uh, NIT directors in one go, two days we sat, 60 people we interviewed. And then I asked Devan Kankar, who was in a, uh, IIT Bombay director, read your list of 10. And he read, and believe me, out of 10, 9 was common list of all the six uh, evaluators. So this is how we decided on merit. We don't dictate. And that's how, that's the difference of the other. That, how does this impact your body of view on the verdict itself? No, there is, a, as far as admission is concerned, nobody was denied uh, admission because if somebody has other or not. Other is just an identification thing and whatever the post we are studying it, and from the law department, we we'll get complete we have raised questions to the law department. What changes we need to bring and what clarification we need to issue. So we will issue according to because we respect that because I believe that the Supreme Court has upheld the validity of Aadhaar. And as far as scholarships are concerned, which go from general and personal development, that we are also asking ki what to do about those scholarships because they need to be linked with Aadhaar because that is the funds. It's a welfare scheme and scholarship go directly to the students' accounts uh, from consolidated fund. So I think that's the only where it will be. But for examination, we have our admit cards, many other identity marks. So we are not insisting other. Quality education or quality education for all is our motto, is our action, is our vision, is our plan, and that is what we are implementing. That is the only one agenda. See, in our country, it's a long history. While Britishers were ruling us, 125 years ago, the leaders of political leaders started taking interest into education because they thought that unless we educate our people, we will not be ready even if we get freedom. And therefore, Mother Mohan Malviya Ji, uh, Dr. Ambedkar, then Lokmane Tilak, Agarkar Ji, many other social reformers in each state, in Maharashtra, Karnavi, Bahara Party, Punjab, Rao, Sarvakya, many other things, and in each state, in Karnataka, various months and mandirs also, they started educational institutes. They ran it like a charitable institute. And today also, there are many institutes which are run by and funded and supported by friends from elsewhere to put into education. So that is our ethos, that is our tradition, and that is our history. Now, there are purely private schools run by, for if somebody is, wants to run it for profit, that's a larger debate which needs to happen in uh, society. Today, the, we are, and everybody, for over 70 years after independence, everybody thinks that education should not be a profit-making activity.